I bought a 10,000 pound coin for 13 quid. Well, kinda, let me explain. If you don't already know, I'm an avid coin enthusiast. I was looking to purchase my first hammered coin, and I was looking for something along the lines of an Edward the First penny, full of history and usually in pretty good condition. But what I stumbled upon was much better than an Edward the First penny. It was this, a 1648 Pontefract seed shilling, or at least what's left of it. This is only a fragment of the original coin, and it was found metal detecting less than 13 miles away from Pontefract Castle. So why couldn't I have just bought the actual full coin? Well, to put it simply, they're worth £10,000. Now, let me explain why these coins were even made and why they are so valuable. The coins were minted in Pontefract Castle. During the period of the English Civil War, Pontefract Castle was a place of great importance. Oliver Cromwell, who in fact lay siege to it, described it as one of the strongest inland garrisons in the kingdom. It endured three sieges between 1644 and 1649, eventually falling to the parliamentarians in 1649. But not before they minted a series of coins in Charles I's name and his son Charles II's name, but we'll get back to why that's important. The coins were minted as a means of paying the royalist soldiers who had been holding the castle for many months. They had to use any silver they could find, so they melted down cutlery, plates, and whatever was silver within the castle. After that, they cut and molded the silver into rough octagonal pieces, something never before seen in British coinage, and most likely had inexperienced blacksmiths and metal workers strike the coin's design. On the reverse of the coin, you see Pontefract Castle with the central gateway, cannon protruding to the right, and a flag flying from the tower above the dividing letters P and C, which stand for Pontefract Castle. On the left-hand side of the castle, which is the piece I have, you can see the letters stamped OBS, which is an abbreviation for Obsidium, Latin for Siege. Having that stamp on my fragment, luckily for me, made it much easier to identify this as a seed shilling. Now, the legend surrounding it reads, or Charles II. That makes this coin incredibly interesting, because upon hearing the news of Charles I's execution, the royalists besieged in Pontefract straight away began minting coins in his son's name, Charles II. But as some of you may already know, Charles II didn't rule until after Oliver Cromwell, which was 12 years later. This means that this coin was struck in Charles II's name 12 years before there was actually a Charles II. This too has never happened in British numismatics, making this coin even more unique. The obverse displays the initials CR and a crown above, and the legend reads, which translates from Latin to while I breathe, I hope. These brave royalist soldiers were gonna fight until the very end. This was going to be their final stand. Oliver Cromwell's siege did finally end on the 24th of March, 1649, after the garrison agreed with parliamentarian terms. However, the legacy of this epic tale lies now solely in this coin and others like it. This coin may be very rare and highly desirable from a collector's point of view, but it also holds a great historical value. The fragment I'm holding now may not hold much monetary value, probably worth about what I paid for it, but it certainly holds a priceless story, one only it can tell. That is what this whole channel and my passion for coins is about. History told by those who saw it all. Coins. Thank you as always for joining me in today's episode to learn about an amazing coin. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this, please do leave a like and hit that subscribe button. I also love hearing any feedback from you guys, so feel free to comment down below as well. Once again, a big thank you, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.